Hello everyone, welcome to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce and today we're doing another Women of Horror Spotlight. Today I have with us, she's an author and she has a short story that is in the book of horror short smack and it's called The Circus. I have with us today, MD LaBelle. MD, welcome to the Horror Room. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I, I'm just so happy that you asked me to do it. Listen, I'm glad to have you on. I'm always down for shining the spotlight on women of horror and women of horror authors. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your short story, The Circus. Well, it started out, I, I've always been scared of clowns since I was little. I was on Bozo the Clown, admittedly, when I was like four years old. A friend um, asked my mom if it was okay for me to go, so we went. And... I was so scared that light came up with the TV and everything and I freaked out and I just started screaming and crying and everything. It was just amazing. And they had to take me out. They actually had to go to commercial and take me out because I would oh. not stop. I just was so freaked out. So ever since then, I've always had this fear of clowns in that. And so I, I tend to write about my nightmares and things. Things just pop up like crazy. And with the circus it's about a small town that seems really chill and nothing out of the ordinary basically and i take aspects of the evil that can come into even little towns and that that you don't think about the quiet little out you know behind closed doors kind of things and when it comes into town the circus it comes on like a like a nighttime wind and it comes in at Halloween and it's one of those mysterious things. It's like a lore that I tried to build into it and everything. And so basically it comes into town and then one by one it's affecting people, the evil behind it. And in the first book, I really didn't get too much into the circus in itself because it was more about the town and the effects that it had on it. And that so it's it's pretty interesting a lot of people like that they thought it was a lot um kind of like the beginning of splatterpunk but i've always written that way i i remember when i was 12 um i was always into dracula and stephen king and all those kind of books you know and i read everything i possibly could in the library about it and anything that horror i knocked them right out of the park even when i was like 10, 12 years old, mind you. And my parents just couldn't believe it because they were not big readers or anything like that. They don't know where they got this from or anything. <laughs> and they had this competition in school called the Young Authors Program. And I was like, okay, it's a competition. You know, no big thing. I didn't even think about it. I didn't want to enter. And one of my English teachers, I think it was, she, she had everybody write a short story. You know, and I wrote one about a vampire. It wasn't Dracula or anything like that. It was something else. I can't even remember now. It's been so many years, you know. And I put so much detail and stuff into it, apparently. And it was a short story, once again. And um, somehow it made it through the first round to like Lansing and all those places like that in Michigan. And I think I got first or second place there. And so then it went to nationals and I could not believe it. I was like, holy cow, you know, I'm like, no way. You know, at the time you don't really think about that kind of stuff, how big it is really. But in the end I got first or second place. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was published in like the who's who of something or other in like a anthology of several of them that were put together in that and in, one little book in that it was really cool so i always have kind of written stuff like that and it's always been my passion is, is horror it's just something that stuck with me ever since i was young so but i think that's why i wrote the circus because i've had so many nightmares about the circus and the clowns and everything and you know how you gotta work through that stuff it just yeah. you know that's the way it is so but then after that i had so many uh readers they constantly wanted me to Get in more into the the lore behind it and if there was something else with it you know like if they're demons or whatever i won't spoil it you know but um basically the second one goes back into it and then the sheriff returns and all that and it's kind of cool because you think it's going to be a brand new story and it's a standalone it can be read as its own too but then the new sheriff calls up the old sheriff and is like, um, 
hey, can you help me out here kind of thing? I have questions for you. So the guy just shows up out of nowhere and he helps out. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. But um, other than that, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's crazy. It's so true. Cra clowns are so freaking cr creepy. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm shocked that they're, they're, I don't know how in society we allow clowns with kids. But clowns are terrifying. I mean, they're pretty creepy. I think it's all because if you think about it, there's like this facade that they've got going on. And with mm -hmm. that makeup, they could have anything back there. They could be a serial killer or anything. You don't know. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, they could be frowning. They could be just like completely emotionless. But because they've got that smile on their face, everybody thinks they're absolutely harmless. But really, how many kids disappear a year when there's circuses around? You never know. You know? That is true. And there's been a lot of serial killers who happen to be clowns. I mean, that's mm -hmm. their, their, their full-time job. Now, now, as a writer, what are some struggles that you've ran into right now when it comes to indie horror writing? Well, I would have to say, um, I've been doing this for about four years now. I've wrote 59 books in those four years. Um, the biggest struggle I have is marketing because when I first started out four years ago, I would hit number one on Amazon bestsellers list. Bam, bam, bam. Every week it seemed like I had no problem doing it. I, I put up my first book out. I didn't even want to publish in the first place. My my family pushed me into it kind of thing. You know, it was like a romance novel. And it was over a dream, you know. And, and I had written it over like two or three years, somewhere around there. Just kind of fleetingly here and there and everything. And I've just noticed that since then... Things have changed so much. I don't know if it was because of COVID and all that kind of stuff where everybody stopped working and they just decided we're going to do this and maybe it'll hit real big and it'll be an easy way to get money, you know, but they don't realize the struggles behind it because every day I write, I'm marketing, I'm publishing everything. I do everything myself. I also have my own web store where I sell eBooks and all that kind of stuff. My book boxes, merchandise, everything. Um, it's real difficult because I have to cram all that in and I've still got three kids at home. So it's, it's yeah. very, very, I mean, I just got one that just moved out and she's 20 now and she had some problems and stuff, but we got her and we worked it through and everything. And they don't realize, I don't think readers realize how much it takes out of authors and how much time we actually put into it because they'll read through a book in maybe an hour or two. And then they're looking for their next quick fix. But they don't realize it's taken years in some of these people. Me, it takes maybe, like, I can write uh, a short story anywhere between three to six days, something like that. I can knock it out of the ballpark. Um, when I first started, I like I said, my first book was, I think, 150... It was like 150,000 words. So it was it was a big book. I had to split it into yeah. three. Because Amazon at the time wouldn't even print something that big. And so basically after that, I started writing a little bit smaller. And then I started going with like these paid web novel platforms and stuff. Because they wanted me for like romance novels and that. But I always had in the back of my head that I wanted the horror novels. Because that's always been my first love and so I still did that and it was kind of nice because um the one of the paid web novel platforms I had worked for um they had like competitions and stuff and this one time they actually had like a mystery horror thriller competition so I went into it and I was one of the winners of that for my nightmares and that ended up with like a, an award and all that kind of stuff and then I, I don't know if you've ever heard of like uh, Ink It it's like a popular thing online where you can put books and stuff like that no. um, a lot of people do it it's like Wattpad and all that kind of stuff where you're writing okay. on it it's free but um, what I was told is uh, while I was working on the paid web novel platforms that um, you could put like the first three chapters on there, kind of like as a teaser kind of thing. And so I put them on Wattpad and Inkit and things like that. Well, Inkit had a competition and they had like a mystery thriller competition too. And so I put Sophia on there and I won that at one of the places in that. I think it was second or something like that. 
And so I got that award, and then I got to go on, I got a contract that I won for Gladia, like, app or something like that. And I was on that for about a year. And it's just amazing, the marketing between all that stuff. At that time, they took care of most of that, but I still was in charge of some of it. I had to go on, like, Facebook and, and TikTok and all that and make videos and stuff like that and uh, create groups. It, it's 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 just so crazy. It, like I said, it's very time consuming in that and it takes so much. I've slowed down actually because I was doing about 15 to 20 books a year and at first really? full length books. I mean full length. Like um, 120,000, 80,000, 100,000 ones. I was knocking them out like every couple months. I had no life and it was right during like COVID time. So my kids were at home but they were ignoring me completely <laughs> because <Yes>. teenagers. <laughs> so I yeah, had all the time in the world, you know, <laughs> it's like, what the heck? But I just, I, I realized like this last year, I've had some health problems and stuff. And I realized how much I missed of their lives growing up. And that even though they didn't want to really have too much to do with me because they were teens, mm -hmm. I still, I could have did more with them. We did a couple of vacations and stuff when we actually could, you know, but I think it's more important to be with your family and stuff than because these things, yes, they're books and that people read them and that and they check them to the side. I've had a lot of readers where they'll put them on their shelf. They'll get the special editions and that signed copies and they treasure them. And I love, I love all my readers. I, I love them so much for that. Um, I will always remember that till the day that I, you know, pass on kind of thing. But it's just the fact is, is that you have to put your family first. And so I've started doing that this year. And I've noticed it's it's real hard, like with marketing, because once you do that, then you slow down. And instead of like writing like two or three a month, like I was putting out, because I kid you not, there was several months there that I had like four or five books I was putting out a month and I was going a little nutty. <laughs> it was yeah. crazy. I mean, <laughs> Between kids books and youth thrillers and horror novels and romance novels and all the stuff. I was putting them all out like each month. And people could not believe it. They thought I was doing AI writing and all this kind of stuff when that started. That's what it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> they were so mad. I mean, people, they, they were like, how can you put out so many a month? I was like, because they have no life. I'm doing this full time. And that's all I do, you know, between running the kids to school or something like that or to the doctor's. After that, then I had to do that, you know, and I was mm -hmm. writing, no, oh, I would say I slept maybe two or three hours a night and it was scary there for a Sounds while. Like my husband, he was like, you need to stop doing this. <laughs> he could not believe it. He was <laughs> like, you need to quit for now. <laughs> but I couldn't because once you start doing it, if you get a foothold in there, like I've slowly managed to be able to do now and I've started, um, I used to be on like wide on Barnes and Noble and all that kind of stuff. Cause originally when I had first started publishing, it was just on like Amazon and Kindle Unlimited. But I learned that if you are not a major name on there, it's really hard to make any yeah. living out there whatsoever. You have to know who's who and you've got to have the money for the marketing, especially now. Like so many authors are spending thousands of dollars just to get their name out there because like on Amazon, you don't even get seen on an ad unless you put out hundreds to thousands of dollars a day. And it's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. I sure don't have that kind of money with three kids at home still. There's no way. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just have to go by word of mouth and I go on a lot of like Facebook groups and stuff like that. And I try to get my books out there. But this is the killer thing. Readers do not want to hear from authors, plain and simple. They don't want to hear about your book unless it's from somebody else. But the only way to get your book out there is to tell somebody about it. So it's kind of a double-edged sword there. Because how do you get it out there? And, you know, so. I 100% agree. I mean, I mean, that's my forte is marketing, you know. And mm -hmm. um, even with my YouTube channel. I, listen, I agree with you. You know, I'm new to this. I've been doing this a little bit over a year, mm -hmm. and but I, I, but but I've grown fast. But but almost like you said, I had to give up a piece of my life mm -hmm. for this because you know I work, you know, a twelve hour day, and then I come home for four hours and I do interviews or I do some kind of content. I have no life, you know. What I mean, 
But that's something, unfortunately, that you have to do. When you're in the beginning, it's all about you have to make huge. I don't care if you want to be an indie horror author, filmmaker, or, or YouTuber. You have mm -hmm. to, you got to jump with both feet in. You really right. do. And, mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, that means sacrificing vacations, family time, mm -hmm. rest. But um, marketing is the key. I mean, that's one of the things I hear a lot of indie horror authors is, mm -hmm. how do I get my work out there? And unfortunately, you got to jump with both feet in the water and mm -hmm. hope for the best. I know, definitely. Well, I know it's getting harder and harder because there are good sides to indie publishing and bad sides. Um, yes. I am an indie publisher, obviously. I've had plenty of options where I could have done traditional publishing. I've had people approach me. But I never liked the terms because I'm one of these people. I'm my own boss, and I don't like other people handling my stuff because they never do it the way I want it to, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I even do my own covers and everything. I have an art degree. So I do all that stuff, and I do everything to the to the exact way I want it done. And I'm so afraid that if I went with one of these traditional publishers, unless it was one of the big five or something that actually know exactly what they're doing. And a lot of times they mess it up too. You know, it's kind of yeah. hard. I mean, they might not get the exact cover that somebody wants. And then you have this bickering going on between them. And the author really has no say so at that point because they pretty much signed off and they're kind of, oh, really? floating, you know, once they put their story out there, then they're hoping that they'll do it right by them. But a lot of times they don't. And that's why I really haven't signed with anybody. I started my own publishing company, Casper Publishing. But I was kind of hoping to get, like, new horror authors this year and stuff like that. But it just didn't work because, like I said, I had a lot of health problems and stuff like that this year. So that's had it get put off for a couple of years. In the meantime, I've been trying to build up, like, people that I can count on and things like that for, I've got editor names i've got um other artists and things like that if i get to the point where you know like i can't do it all by myself anymore and everything um i even i have a director friend and all that that my uh the circus it's gonna be in blood on the bleachers i think it's coming out the end of this year they said something about it's gonna be on the red carpet for a day okay. they're gonna show limited uh in the theaters and that and then it's gonna go to like um netflix or whatever you know kind of thing and it's kind of cool because my friend um oh uh it's bob gunner um he's one of the writers he kind of took me under his arm when i first started out um he became my facebook friend he's like well do you mind you know if i give you some tips and that and i listened to him really well and that he got me uh started on audiobooks and all that kind of stuff and i thank him so much because he really helped out a great deal and he became a screenwriter and he then started knowing this director, um, Chase Dudley, and he did the Blood Chase. on the Bleachers. Yep. Chase. And um, so Bob was talking to him one day, and Chase is like, I've got this little part where I need a book. Do you know of any authors? You know, because he asked Bob, and Bob really didn't have anything that was eye catching, flashy covers to put in it. He's like, Do you know any authors that. Um, might have something that would fit with the horror movie, you know. And he thought of me right away. And I, I was so thankful because that was really awesome. And so then they asked me about it. And I was like, well, sure, I've got the circus, you know, because everybody's seen it around. It's really bright. And I made it that way. So that way it was very eye-catching. Even Barnes & Noble has it in their stores, you know. Stuff like that. I've got a book signing coming up in October 19th in Sagadaw where they ordered them in that and that's gonna be one of the key ones that and the lake and there's like a romance novel and my youth thriller series and stuff and those are all gonna be there and it's the first time it kind of scares me actually because i've never had somebody else order my books for me it's just always mm -hmm. like i said i've got to do everything myself kind of control freak here <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh well <laughs> sometimes it's the only way you can do it right but um it kind of scares me because they ordered them all and I'm hoping people even show up because not that many people in Michigan know me. You know, they know me all around the world and that when I was like I paid web novels, I had a really famous one. It was a werewolf novel 
and I had over a million copies sold between Amazon, Bards and wow. Google, Google Play, um, you name it, and the paid web novel platforms. And I was on like 200 plus apps that it was on and everything, contracts with and all that kind of thing. They still are on there, but I don't really promote it very much anymore on there because I'm trying to break away from it to that respect, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's it was really crazy, but you don't actually make that much, unfortunately, you know. I wish I was a millionaire now, but... <laughs> I was about to say, off a million copies, I mean, I would have thought you would at least make six figures, no? No, unfortunately, when you're in those kind of things, they make most of the money. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to break away from that kind of thing and mm -hmm. go more for myself where I'm publishing it and that and not having to worry about everybody else, what they're worried about and, you know, the marketing and that. But the marketing is just a killer. <laughs> so. I can mention. Now, now, MD, I have a question. You, you're, you're big into horror writing, but you do jump genres and from mm -hmm. romance to, to thrillers. Is that hard to do to to have your brain jumping into different genres? Actually, remarkably, no. I, I've had readers ask me how in the world I can do that because I've actually had a couple of readers that would only read romance their whole life. They've never read anything else and never touched horror. They didn't even want to. And they're like, wait a minute. you We love your romance novels and that. Like, why, why don't we try them? So I had this one guy, he had read some of my romance novels. He absolutely loved them, you know, and he's like, okay, well, I'm addicted to those. Maybe I'll try it. So he read Sophia, the one that was the, the Inket winner, and he just couldn't believe it. He's like, my God, you can do everything. I mean, I don't even know how you can do it, but <laughs> everything you write is just perfect. It's awesome, you know? I, I was like, well, you know, that made me, like, cry because I couldn't believe it. I was like, that's pretty cool. Thank you, you know? But, yeah, it's just, I don't even think about it. Like, the story pops in my head or, like, if it's in, a, like, a nightmare or a dream or something, I'll usually start writing it down. And I have, like, hundreds of books, basically, in my cell phone. If I ever lose it, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> but oh, I have them in yeah. my, like, note things, you know? Because uh -huh. whenever something pops in my head or I see a picture of something that reminds me of a story I should write or something, I'll jot it down quick. And I've been trying to write them down so I don't have to rely on it quite so much, you know? But, <laughs> um, and that's the thing, though, like, I don't have a problem. It's like somebody in my head is not me, you know, kind of thing. Somebody else. And they're just telling me what to do. And I just have unlimited stories. It's really weird because, like I said, I've got hundreds of them just popping in my head all the time. And my husband even, he went to say, sounds like you're like multiple personality or something like that, you know? Yeah. I pop in and I can do a horror. And then the next minute I do a romance or a thriller, like a youth thriller or a children's book. Like I've got this one in Barnes in Midland, Michigan there. They absolutely love this. They saw this book. It's a series called Casper's First Series. It's uh, The Holidays. It's about uh, this cat this black cat he's a young one um about a year or two old somewhere around there it's his first holidays his halloween is thanksgiving etc etc and it's very family orientated it has very strong family message and i wanted to do that because we had this um oh it was maine coon hound uh, not maine coon hound but maine coon cat there we go. Mm -hmm. And he was about a year old. He was getting into trouble with everything in the world. I mean, I kid you not. He was such a crazy cat. But he, he got um, where he had gotten like a urine stone or something. And so then mm -hmm. he ended up, we had to rush him to the emergency for the vet. And they did surgery. And just as soon as he came out of surgery, he died. And they were so oh. heartbroken. I could not believe it, the vets, because they had only just met him and they were crying because they loved him already, you know, because he was such a sweet cat, but he was troublemaker, honestly. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that he died so horribly. I knew I had to do something. And when I came up for the idea for the, the kids' books, the, the Casper's first, it just kind of popped in my head. So Casper, he gets in trouble a lot in this book. And... So then once that one went through, everybody seemed to like it. They thought it was really cute and that. And so basically I started writing the other ones. And people are like, you only got one of the books? And I'm like, well, 
I suppose I could write other ones. And so then I wrote Thanksgiving and then, you know, like Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And I always come up with different plots for it and that. And so like just a different genre. I don't know. It, like I said, it just pops up in my head. <laughs> I have no clue. Where they go. <laughs> but, <laughs> because I mean, I, I've had authors, indie authors from, you know, other genres said, hey, have you ever thought about interviewing indie authors from, or in, even filmmakers from other genres? I'm like, Mm-hmm. I would love to do that because I don't I, I don't just watch I mean I mean read indie horror um mm-hmm. novels. I read a lot of type of indie novels and indie movies. Right. I was like I don't have the time for that. Plus my, my brain wouldn't be allowed for me to jump from horror to action to mm-hmm. horror to thriller to horror. My brain just I mean that's a lot. So I mean I give it to you because mm-hmm. my brain can only focus on horror but right now. I don't know. It's it I guess it's kind of a little hard in a way because I've noticed since I had wrote this one, I started into dark romances last year, um, maybe like March or April last year. And I wrote this series. It got banned on Amazon <laughs> because I put a little too many uh, trigger warnings in there. <laughs> I mean, it's the longest trigger warning list I've ever seen. I kid you not. Like nobody can even oh. top it. They've, tried many times and they're like oh it's not the longest and they look at they're like okay maybe it is <laughs> but they uh they didn't for the longest time ban it on amazon and then one day i went to just change the price for a sale i was gonna have a 99 cent sale on all my ebooks because there's three in the series mm-hmm. and everybody loved the series anyways and that but i wanted to draw more attention to it so i was trying to get 99 cent sale to give back to the readers and that and sure enough, all of a sudden, somebody must have read it and it didn't even have the trigger warnings on it at the time because they wouldn't allow me to originally print it out with the trigger warnings or even publish the ebooks with the trigger warnings at all. They would not let me do it. They, like, flat out turned it down. They told me that I had to take them out or I couldn't get it published. I was like, okay. So I took the trigger warnings off the front end of it and I published it and that. And like I said, then suddenly the 99 cent sale and they're like, wait a minute. And so then they went and uh, banned the third ebook. And I was like, why? Yeah, all this time. I, the only thing I can think of is, is that they were mad that I was marking it down to 99 cents because they were like four ninety nine each. And so they were making a massive killing off of that book because I was getting... Mm-hmm. Typically, I want to say 500 to 1,000 books a month sold on that. On each that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And amazing. it was crazy because it was just, it's serial killers. And everybody loves dark romance serial killer kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. just the big thing. And I didn't even think about it at the time. It was just a dream I had, you know. And I've got a lot of mental illness in my family with, like, relatives and that. And so I've always tried to be careful with that and so um like i made the mistake of i said like um i can't remember what it was multiple personality serial killer or something like that and then someone had um come up to me and they said now it's called something else so then i looked it up because i'm old school you know i i'm i turned 50 this year like last month which is scary too in its own way (laughs) so i've got to make my name now or i'm never gonna make it you know what i mean yeah but uh it is just really weird because the thing is is that um i'm always careful with that but people have attacked me because it became somewhat popular and then when i got banned it became really popular not tiktok popular mind you i mean i wish Mm -hmm. it was but I've never had anything go viral on TikTok, you know, but it like I went to this um, book signing in April. It was like this massive book signing. There was like 60 authors together kind of author event. And basically um, I had, let's say $900 worth of pre-orders, let alone. And then when I went there, I sold a lot more too of what I had left. And that was just in those three books. So that was scary for me because I never had that much just in two hours time. And I was like, dang, you know? yeah. but it's just, I don't know. It's, it's really weird because like I said, I can write all the different genres in that. And it's amazing that my readers have followed me onto the different things. Cause 
honestly, I thought, you know, romance would always stay with romance. Horror would stay with horror. But when I have, like, arcs and things like that, they all jump in on it because they all want to read them, no matter what genre it is. <laughs> Even my kids' books, some of them are grabbing at them. They're like, give me, give me, get off. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's really interesting. <laughs> but, yeah. So. Love it. Empty, real quick. I, mm -hmm. I know you have a book signing coming up. Let's go ahead and plug that as well. Um, I have okay. a book signing at Barnes and Noble in Saginaw, Michigan, on October nineteenth, uh, from one to three p.m. Um, I would wish everybody to show up. Whoever's in the area, um, there will be the circus. There will be the lake, which is another one of my horrors. Um, with the youth thrillers, the first book, uh, the stain on the wall. Um, that's for like 10 to 12 year olds, maybe nine year olds, if you know, they've read a while and up, it can be a short story for adults, but it's, it's, it's in the series, Mr. Creepers, Chillers kind of thing. So a lot of people have said it's akin to like goosebumps kind of thing. And oh, then okay. I do have one romance novel, but it's a rom-com. So it's not quite my normal thing. And it's kind of out of the ordinary because I've got the horrors and the thriller and then I've got. A cute rom com. You're <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just all over the place, Empty. You're just all over the place. Yep. I, I fucking love it, though. I fucking love it. Empty, <laughs> where can everyone find you and all of your work? Um, well, I'm pretty much everywhere. Like, if you go online, you Google search me, just MD LaBelle or author MD LaBelle, you literally get like pages of searches. But um, I'm on Barnes, I'm on Amazon, I have my website, mdlabelle.com. Um, there I have a regular adult site and then there's also the kids site that if you go up in the menu you can click on it and it's kids corner and it has all my kids books baby books all the kind of stuff merchandise and stuff but um yeah and like I said I'm on over 200 paid web novel platforms with my older books some of the horror novels some romance novels you name it you know so like I said everywhere pretty much <laughs> <laughs> and Love even it. in like the physical stores like indie bookstores um i think there's at least 17 of them on my website at the bottom of the first page that are listed that i know of i know there's more of them i just haven't gone took in the time to go online and look to see exactly where everything is um like there's barnes and noble and midland and then saginaw's got them um i have another book signing october 5th at the barnes and noble in muskegon michigan but that's an author event with like 25 different authors in that, which will be real cool. It'll have like Jonathan awesome. Rand from the Michigan Chillers and all that kind of stuff. And those are traditional publishers in it, uh, traditionally published uh, authors and stuff. So, yeah, it's just crazy. It's just so much going on in there. So, but yeah. Love it. Listen, MD, this has been a blast having you on. Listen, everybody, if you're up in the Michigan area, please get out there and get to some of those book signings and definitely check out her work and also get over to her website as well as Barnes and Noble, Amazon, wherever you get your books yep. and grab the circus and all of her books. Listen, she's got every single genre and that's my phone going off, which, is, which sometimes <laughs> happens during interviews. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce and that's MD LaBelle. We'll see you next time. Take care.